Thank you, worship team. We appreciate you and we thank God for your faithfulness and your diligence and 
And the Lord is everything we need. We thank you for those of you that have tuned in today to hear this broadcast and to receive this word. We thank God for your continued support. Today we're going to move into lesson three of the lesson series we've been doing. But before we do that, we're going to say our confession. Everybody with your Bible in your hand or wherever your Bible is. Repeat after me. This is my Bible. I am who it says I am. This book calls me an overcomer. And that's who I am. Today I shall be taught the infallible, unchanging word of God. So my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. As I gladly receive the word today. I believe that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the entrance of your word not only brings life, it brings light. We thank you for the victory we have through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now, God, let the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. What's in the name? Lesson three. And the subtitle would be The Family's Name. The Family's Name. The family's name. Let me begin after we made the, the adjustment. Uh, my mic was acting up. Let me start and open with this line. You have an inheritance from Jesus to use his name, which is God's name in the New Testament. God's name is Jesus in the New Testament. And you have a right to use that name if you are a believer. A believer is someone that has given their life to the Lord and received him to the abandonment of the world, in, 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 in essence, taking their sight and moving their lordship away from Satan and coming under the lordship of Jesus Christ. That's a believer. They believe that he, he hung on a cross, he died, and was resurrected that third day morning, and that he was born of a virgin. That's a believer. And so... Once you become a believer, you move into the family of God. And in that family, the family has rights and privileges that we want to make sure, again, that church folk and uh, uh, saved folk know the benefits that you have. You've got benefits. You don't just live it like everybody else lives it. You have benefits, and they are kingdom benefits. Everybody say kingdom benefits. Kingdom. One of Jesus' purpose is to give us his name, in giving us his name, was to empower the believer with authority over the enemy. He gave us his name so that we would have authority. And he demonstrated that authority before he died on the cross. That we would have authority. Authority means that you can bring something under your charge. It can be subject to you. you it doesn't rule you, you rule it. And it's time for you to decide who's ruling who. To 
share a story, Jesus had been invited to teach in the synagogue in Nazareth on the Sabbath day, which is Saturday. He asked for the scrolls, which is where the word, the Old Testament words were basically in scrolls. They were not in a, a, a bound a Bible or book. And he asked for the scrolls, and he rolled to the part where he, 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 he read something. And it's written in the New Testament, but it's also in the Old Testament. I'll give you the Old Testament later in Isaiah. But Luke 4.18 is what he read, but he read it from the Old Testament. But it says, and I'm just going to read the first line. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. That's the key part that I wanted us to get. And then it goes on to say what he was anointed to do. But the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. Anointed means he's, he's established me as an authority to do something. I'm anointed to do it. Anointed singers sing under a different authority, a different power. Anointed musicians play under a different authority, a different power. When you're anointed, the anointing does something. It's not just good to the ear, it's good to the spirit. Amen? And so, we know the anger of the people that they, had, they got angry with him when he said that. Who, who are you talking about? You're only Joseph's son. You're just Mary's boy. You're anointed to do what? All of these things? To preach, to, to gospel to the poor? Heal the broken heart, proclaim liberty to the captive, recover of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty those who are oppressed. What? You're just Joseph's boy. But Jesus was reading them his resume. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. Amen. And, and in church, you really can't do anything unless you're anointed or set apart to do it. You need to operate in your anointing. You may want to do, I may want to do what somebody else does, but I'm not anointed to do that. And I won't be successful if I'm not anointed to do it. Amen? All right. And everybody else will know you're not anointed to do it. Amen? The question is, where was Jesus anointed? In Luke 4, 1, we find Jesus was filled with the Spirit at his baptism in the Jordan. He was anointed with power and authority. Then he was anointed to go to the wilderness. Wow. To be tempted of the devil. But not until we get to Luke 4.18 do we get this statement. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. When did he get anointed? When he was first baptized in the Jordan. The Spirit, Holy Spirit sat on him as a dove. His father spoke from heaven and he was in the water. And, 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 and he was anointed then to do what he went and did that we saw in 418. Jesus acknowledges and announces his authority through the anointing. The anointing for testing and temptation. What? You got to be uh, anointed to be tempted? In some cases, you do. He had to be anointed to be tempted for 40 days of fast and prayer. And at that time, without eating anything, not even water. And at that time, the anointing kicked in because the devil had to be rebuked. And each time Satan showed up to tempt him with bread or a or, or power, uh, worldly power, he said, it is written. So, it is written. It is written. Man shall not live by bread alone. So he had to whoop up on him with the word, but that's because he was anointed to do that. So the anointing brought an authority. Everybody say with me, the anointing brings authority. And it brought authority for him to operate. And so he operated in that authority. And from then on in until the time of his death, he operated in that authority, that anointed authority. And after that scene in Nazareth, we find Jesus again in Capernaum teaching on the Sabbath day. And Luke 4, 31 through 37 says this. 
Luke 4, 31 through 37. It says this. Then he went down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and was teaching them on the Sabbath, and they were astonished at his teaching. See, when you are anointed, your teaching is anointing, and it astonishes. And they were astonished at his teaching, for his words was with authority. His words were with authority. You're teaching stuff we never had, but God is coming to call so straight and so strong and so sure. Now in the synagogue, there was a man who had a spirit of an unclean demon. And he cried out with a loud voice saying, let us alone. What have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? I need to stop there. The enemy, the devil, knows the name of our God. Now, if the devil knows Jesus' name, you ought to know it. He knows the name. He said, and he cried out with a loud voice saying, let us alone. What have we to do with you? Did you come to destroy us? I know who you are. He, not only did he know his name, but he knew who he was. He said, you're the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, be quiet and come out of him. And when the demon had thrown him in their midst, it came out of him, and he did not hurt him. So who was talking out of the man was really the demon. Then they were all amazed and spoke among themselves. Who was that? Everybody else there. Saying, what a word this is. For with authority and power, he commands the unclean spirits, and they come out. See, it won't come out unless you operate in authority. And the authority comes with the name. And the devil knows the name. The devil knows who it is. And you should too. As you are in the family. And, and the report about him went out into every place for the, in the surrounding region. Jesus pursued his primary calling as teacher, taking advantage of, of the courtesy of the synagogue. We are told what Jesus taught, but we are told of the effect of his teaching. You ought to be effective when you teach. They were astonished. That's effective. They were amazed. They were not only moved, they realized that something else moved. And that's why when we stand and teach, we ought to teach with such authority that, that anything that's unlike God ought to move. Who do we wrestle with? And sometimes we think that we're wrestling with each other. And we spend too much time falling out, falling in, working with each other, uh, uh, getting on each other's nerves, all that kind of stuff. But that's not where the believer's real wrestling match is. Ephesians 6 and 12 tells us where it is. It says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly place. That's who we wrestle against. We wrestle against spiritual power. And we must take authority over them. Amen? When you deny Jesus, you deny yourself access to his authority and anointing. 
Jesus is the anointed one and we operate in his anointing. We operate in his anointing. And here comes what I read in Luke 4, 18. Here it is in Isaiah 10, 27. This is a prophetic word. When Jesus read it, he said, this is me. It's been fulfilled in your hearing. But here is Isaiah 700 years earlier, and he prophesied about what Jesus would say. And he said, it shall come to pass in that day that his burden will be taken away from your shoulder and his yoke from your neck and the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing. What anointing is he talking about? He's talking about Jesus' anointing. His ability to break and destroy yoke. Anything anointed comes to destroy yoke. When you experience anointed singing, it breaks yokes. Sets the captives free. All the things that Jesus said, that's what the anointing comes to. Comes to, to lift burdens and to destroy yokes. Somebody ought to be happy about that. And if you aren't getting them lifted and destroyed, then you're not operating in the anointing. But you have it because of who you have. And you've got his name. Amen. The Bible says that. And when the demon had thrown him in their midst, it came out of him and did not hurt him. Because Jesus commanded it out. And so we need to, to, to return to our roots and start casting out what's not of God. Why is it taking authority? Are we allowing it? Do we believe it? Do we believe we have the authority of the name that we can use it? 